Today I'm going to show you how to use reference labels in Power BI. Reference labels is a new feature in the November 2023 Power BI update and trust me, you're going to love this. Hey, before you get started, if this is the first time you stop by this channel, please don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. So now guys, no more talking and let's do this. Real quick before we get started, this is the final result that we are trying to achieve with this tutorial. I have two visuals here, two new card visuals. The one on the left, as you can see the information that it's at the bottom, the layout is a row layout and then the visual on the right, the layout is a column layout. As always, we're going to start from zero here. Please pay close attention. The first thing that we want to do here is we're going to create a couple of measures. So let's go over here, let's go over profits and then let's create our first measure. So our first measure is going to be month over month profit growth. So let's do that. And here we're going to use variables. So let me make this a little bit bigger so you can visualize this better. If you're not familiar with variables, I have a tutorial as well. I'm going to share with you the link so you can check it out. Our first variable is going to be up arrow. And guess what? We're going to use here the unicard function. If you're not familiar with this function, no problem at all. I also have a tutorial. I'm going to share with you the link here. And the unicard number here should be 12, 91 and 37. So this is going to give you an up arrow. And then our next variable is going to be down arrow. For the down arrow, the unicorn number is going to be 12, 91, 39. Perfect. Our next variable here is going to be current profit. So for the current profit variable, here we're going to reference a measure, the profit measure. It's right there. So the next variable here is going to be previous month profit. And as you may have guessed, we're going to use here the previous month profit measure as well. The next variable is going to be growth. For this measure, we're going to use a divide function. This is going to be current profit, the variable that we just created minus previous month profit. The variable, keep that in mind, is this one right here. And then this should be divided by the previous month profit variable as well. Check this out and then here let's use return and like I said before this is the fun part we're going to use here the if e function with a couple of tweaks okay let's do that so we're going to use here the growth variable the variable that we just created if this is less than zero just give me growth the same variable and also give me the arrow which is going to be the down arrow so let's do that down arrow right there if that's not the case if this is false you're gonna give me the same thing here with the difference that this should be up arrow does it make sense yes so close parenthesis and let's see what happens so it's working perfectly fine we can create a car here and see how this is working so now guys let's make the tweaks we have to make a couple of tweaks here as well. So this value, the growth value, we need to multiply this by 100. And also we need to add the percentage symbol. And also we need to add space between the arrow and the result. So let's do this quickly. As you might have guessed, we need to multiply this by 100. And then we can also add parentheses here. We need to round this as well. So let's round this. And then here, just one decimal, let's add here the percentage symbol. And then we can also have space here if we want. In that way, this looks so much better. It's more readable. So let's approve these changes and see what happens. So nothing happens here because we need to also adjust the other piece. So let's do that. Control Z. We don't have to start here from scratch. Control V. And the only thing that changes here is this one right here. This should be up arrow. And then guys, we are good to go. Check this out. Magic. Boom. 
There you have the result, my friend. This looks so much better. And now let's keep going. We are on fire here. As you can see, this is working perfectly fine. So the next measure that we want to create here is the quarter over quarter profit growth. Let's do that. Control C, we don't have to create this from scratch. Right click, new measure. Check this out, Control V. And I'm gonna show you here a really, really good trick. So what we need to do next here is to replace previous month with previous quarter. So let's select previous month here and then Control Shift L. Once we selected this, we can just replace previous month with previous quarter. Let's do that, previous quarter and then hit enter and then you should be good to go. We also need to rename here the measure, which is good. Thank you for letting us know. So let's do that. This is gonna be quarter over quarter, profit growth, and then we are good to go, folks. We don't have to do anything else here. So this is awesome. Let's approve these changes. Perfect, we are done with this measure. Now let's keep working on two more measures, okay? Right click again, new measure. And here we're gonna create a new measure called color previous month profit. So let's use here variables month over month, growth, the divide function here, the profit measure minus the previous month profit measure divided by the previous month profit measure, close parenthesis and then return. And here we're gonna use the E function again. If month over month growth, which is the variable that we just created, is less than zero, what happens? Give me red. If not, give me green. Close parenthesis, hit enter, and we are good to go. The next measure that we wanna create here is the color previous quarter profit. So let's do that, control C, new measure, control V, and then we need to replace previous month with previous quarter. Control Shift L, previous quarter. Hit enter, you're good to go. The next step here is to insert the new car visual. Let's do this. And we can delete this for now, we don't need this anymore. Right click, add visual, and here we need to select the new car visual. Once we are here, let's add data and let's select here the unit sold, measure. We can also add an image here. Let's do that real quick. So let's select this visual and then more options. And here, let's go over image. So let's look for an image and let's select this image right here fit, left, boom. We are done with this step. The next step here is to add the details, my friends, the details, so let's do that. How do we do that? We go over here, reference labels. And as you can see, we already have the unit sold measure there and we need to add labels. So let's do that. Our first label is gonna be profit. So let's select the profit measure here, right there. And as you can see, we have a result there. Yay. Let's keep going, folks. And then we can also edit this piece. Let's do that for now. Profit, check this out. For title, let's customize this. And I like to add here a column. So in that way, we know that after the column, we have the result for profit. So this is perfect. So let's go back, all here. And here, let's keep adding more labels. So let's add here, previous month profit. Now you can see previous month profit. So let's select previous month profit. Once we select this label, we'll go over here, we customize the title as well. So we're gonna call this last month. Check this out, okay? So once we are there, we can also add column here. This is perfectly fine. So let's go back here and add another label. And for this particular case, we're gonna use previous quarter profit. 
let's select here the label the previous quarter profit once we are there we also can customize the title let's add last quarter okay column there as well it's working the next step here is to add the details my friends how do we do this so let's start with previous month profit so we select the label here previous month profit once we are there let's go over detail here and then let's activate this option turn this on and then we're going to add here the details which is the percentage variation and also the arrow so let's add here you might remember this month over month profit growth now you can see the results here and then we can also add conditional formatting for text let's use this let's go over here field value and as you might have guessed we're going to use here the color measure color measure color previous month profit let's hit ok and see what happens now you can see that this is green perfect for the background we're going to do the same find value here color for previous month profit hit ok and now you can see the background as green here transparency let's select 85 percent boom it's working fox so now let's move on and do the same for last quarter so let's go over here select label previous quarter once we are here let's activate detail again check this out let's add data here and this should be quarter over quarter growth perfect this is working and then the next step here is going to be conditional formatting for text we're going to do the same field value here and then color but this should be previous quarter hit ok boom it's red because it's down right and then for background we're going to do the same folks color here previous quarter profit check this out it's red 100 percent so we want to see here 85 percent transparency it's working perfectly fine so now you can also customize this visual so let's do this quickly so let's go over here and then let's select all background is activated let's add here the background color as well for this particular case we're going to select this green and guess what we're going to use also 85 percent transparency you can play with this i selected 85 percent but you can just keep playing and get the results that you are preferring if you go back to the shape we need to have a rounded rectangle here and then let's play with this how about 10 maybe 5 so this looks so much better and then let's go over cards here accent bar so we're gonna have an accent bar here for the top and then the width is gonna be 10 if we want the color is gonna be green as well and transparency is gonna be 85 perfect what do you think so far like i said before this is the row layout so let's do the same for the column layout and we're going to change the measure here from profit to sales so let's do that Control c Control v so once we are here we're going to go over reference labels and here let's select previous quarter profit so let's delete this so we want to make sure that we're deleting everything here there you go let's do the same here for previous month profit detail delete this delete this and then let's go over profit here for the label we don't have detail there it's just a matter of deleting the measure here so once we do that we are ready to replace this with the sales measures so let's go over here again and let's add a label so this is going to be sales the sales measure it's right there now you can see the results and then you can also customize this so let's go over here sales field name custom column right there 
and then we are good to go. So let's keep moving here. Perfect. So we are almost done here. The next step is to change the layout. We go over here, all, and then layout. Remember, we have the rows layout now, the arrangement. We need to change these two columns. Check this out. So this looks so much better. And then we can also add vertical alignment if we want. If not, leave it as is. Spacing. For this particular case, we want to do is how about if we do 10 pixels here? And as you can see, this looks so much better. And then another thing that you can do if you go back to call out. So let's center this. This looks so much better. We're good to go. There you have it, my friends. Really powerful tool. I want to give Miguel and his team, the Power BI Core Visuals team, a shout out. Thank you guys for working so hard on these improvements. We really appreciate that. So if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to subscribe. Check these tutorials out as well. Really good content if you want to keep sharpening your Power BI skills. Thank you guys for your time and see you in my next tutorial.